a landmark case against several international corporations accused of aiding South Africa's apartheid regime is underway. The companies include Daimler AG, General Motors, Ford Motor Company and IBM. They're accused in a class-action lawsuit of complicity in human rights abuses during the years they did business in apartheid South Africa. The suit was filed several years ago by black victims of white minority rule. Their lawyers are seeking up to $400 billion in compensation. A federal court in New York heard an appeal by the corporation seeking to dismiss the suit. They argue that U.S. courts have no jurisdiction in the case. In 2009, after years of litigation, a U.S. court ruled the case could go ahead under the Alien Tort Claims Act, which allows foreigners to file cases against companies for crimes committed abroad. For more, I'm joined here in the studio by Michael Hausfeld, one of the attorneys for the plaintiffs in the lawsuit. We're also joined from South Africa by Marjorie Jobson. She's the national director of the Kulamani Support Group that's filing the lawsuit. She joins us by Democracy Now! video stream from Pretoria. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! First, Michael Hausfeld, explain exactly who you're suing and why. The lawsuit is being brought um, by black South Africans who were abused by the military and security forces of uh, apartheid South Africa uh, against a number of companies that provided the tools to the military and security for them to um, perpetrate the abuse. And. Explain how this case came about and why it is in a U.S. court. Um, it came about because, um, after the turn of the century, there was a, a rising awareness that corporations were never part of the truth and reconciliation process in South Africa. Despite being invited um, by the commissioners, companies refused to testify as to what their role was in regard to um, apartheid and its enforcement. A number of groups approached us and asked if we would investigate whether there was the possibility of bringing a claim against those companies for that complicity. There is a law in the United States called the Alien Tort Statute, which essentially seeks to codify um, customary international law, which rises above national law, which protects basic human dignities. It's the right um, to be free from genocide, to be free from uh, prolonged arbitrary de detention, uh, to be free from torture, to be uh, free from um, officially uh, enforced um, rape. And it allows non-U.S. citizens to bring cases against non-U.S. citizens in a U.S. court, because what's involved is a violation of the law of literally the world. Um, let's go right now to Marjorie Jobson, who's national director of the Kulamani Support Group. You have filed the suit. Uh, you're also an associate of the Institute for Women's and Gender Studies at the University of Pretoria. Explain exactly who you are representing. Um, thank you very much. We are a membership-based organization presently with 58,000 individual victims of gross human rights violations um, on our database, and all, all of our members are part of the struggle to secure reparations. Um, it's basically a struggle to end impunity. Um, we have other cases against impunity, but we think in this case we are against the impunity of corporations. And why the corporations um, that I have just named, uh, like Daimler AG, like Ford Motor Corporation? Well, the remaining five companies in our lawsuits um, are the ones that we've been able to retain, in the, retain on the basis that the equipment that they produced and sold to the South African apartheid regime was directly used in suppressing the uprising against apartheid. It was the armored vehicles that patrolled the townships. It was the weapons and ammunition that were used by the soldiers in those armored vehicles to put down resistance. And it was also the software and the hardware produced by IBM that was used to track and monitor the movements of black activists and also to denationalize um, 
most of the black South African population who were denied South African citizenship and had to become members of homelands, often of homelands that they had never, ever visited. I want to play a clip of Dennis Brutus, the late South African poet and activist, who died just a few weeks ago in Cape Town. He was 85 years old. He spent many years promoting reparations to black South Africans from corporations that benefited from apartheid. Dennis Brutus was a frequent guest on Democracy Now! for years. This is from an interview I did with him in 2008, where he talked about how multinational companies benefited from apartheid. I grew up in Port Elizabeth, for instance, which was the headquarters both of Ford and GM. And they were using black labor, but it was very cheap black labor, because there was a law in South Africa which said, A, blacks are not allowed to join trade unions, and B, they're not allowed to strike, so that they were forced to accept whatever wages they were given. They lived in ghettos, in some cases near where I lived, actually in the boxes in which the parts had been shipped from the U.S. to be assembled in South Africa. So you had a whole township called Qua Ford, meaning the place of Ford, and it was all Ford boxes with the name Ford on them, because they were addressed to Ford in Port Elizabeth. Now, what is striking is that when I appeared before the, the GM stockholders meeting in Detroit, and I raised the question on behalf of the American churches, what do you pay the blacks in South Africa? The stockholders voted they didn't want to be told. A 98 percent vote which said, we don't want to be told. So, obviously, the complicity was both at the top executive level, but also at the stockholders. That was Dennis Brutus. It was very interesting. That day, um, we were broadcasting out of the firehouse in downtown New York, and we just walked out of the firehouse and went over to the courthouse, where we thought the trial was going to take place that day, but it had been continued. Um, now, let me ask first Marjorie Jobson. During the South African Truth and Reconciliation Commission, wasn't there a part of those proceedings that involved holding corporations accountable, um, not just people? people coming forward, and if they told the whole story of how they murdered or tortured someone, they would be granted amnesty if they told the full truth, but also a section on corporations. And what happened with that? Well, there was um, three—actually, three days were dedicated to what was called the business hearings of the TRC. Um, it was limited to three days, because they only received written submissions from 55 South African companies. They received no submission at all from any multinational who had operated in South Africa under apartheid. And um, what was very troubling about that hearing was that the South African companies argued that they themselves had been victims of apartheid, rather than beneficiaries of the apartheid laws that provided the, the kinds of things that Dennis Brutus referred to in that interview. Um, I mean, the low wages, the poor living conditions, the, uh, the single-sex hostels, where the removal of people into homelands so that they could only come to townships on contract and live in single-sex hostels for the year and go home three weeks a year. I mean, all of those horrendous things that were constructed um, but by corporations, South African companies, international companies, in collusion with the South African government. And, and not a single company admitted any complicity for those kinds of um, violence. And so, basically, um, when Judge Shindlin gave her, her opinion in April last year, we were really heartened to see that she said that this takes forward the unfinished business of the TRC, particularly in relation to the role of corporations during apartheid. And, and I mean, we, we, this has been so closely watched, because there's such a deep sense of injustice amongst people at this um, impunity that companies are seeking. Uh, we're talking to Marjorie Jobson in Pretoria. She is director of the Kulamani support group that's filing a lawsuit here in New York.